The broadcast ministry of Christ Way Fellowship brings you victory for today. Exalting the Savior, evangelizing the seeker, and equipping the saint. Committed to the principle that you can have victory today and every day through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne Duncan. Well, hello and welcome again to Victory for Today. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to get right back to our study in Daniel, and so please get your Bible and open it to Daniel chapter 10. Now, last week we were looking at those 70 weeks, those 77s that Gabriel uh, helped Daniel to understand about what was ahead for his nation, for Israel. And here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead with chapter 10 today and and not uh, go back and cover that again. But here's what I want to tell you. Uh, I'm going to put uh, on our website, if you go to our website, victoryfortoday.com, and go to archives, you can review not just the video program that we did on television, but you can also listen to the radio program, which is a little different. But here's the thing that I want you to really think about is, is that I'm going to put my notes on there, uh, they're not fancy. <laughs> I promise you, they're not fancy. They're some of it are just handwriting on a piece on a yellow pad. But I'm gonna I want to put my notes and some charts and things on there to help you with that matter of the seventy sevens that we talked about last week. And and also I do that I do that as pretty often as much as I can. Sometimes my notes are are so bad I don't dare put them on there. But. Uh, Uh, Go to the website, go to archives, and find that title, find last week where we talked about Daniel chapter 9 from 20 on through the end of the chapter, and uh, it was uh, God's uh, calendar of events was the title of that message, so go and, and look at that and see, I hope that'll help you some. Now, we're going on to chapter 10 today. And I want us to continue on in this because we're pre- trying to prepare uh, for the new world order. Now, the church is going to be its going to be raptured out of here before the tribulation period, that seven-year period, that 70th week or seven that we talked about last week from Daniel. But that doesn't mean that a lot of the things that are going to uh, uh, be in place as that begins, won't take shape before the church is gone. Uh, I mean, the the Antichrist is going to have to have a vehicle. And that vehicle is going to be the new world order, this globalism that we already see taking shape. This thing is, this, this thing is taking shape, y'all. And you know, uh, there's many people that interpret what Jesus had to say when he said that uh, this generation shall not pass away till all these things come to pass, they take that to be the generation that is included after the formation or the recalling, the rest- restoration of Israel. That took place, now get this, that took place in May of 1948. So if, if he's speaking about a 70-year generation after 1948, hey, that's the baby boomers. That's a lot of y'all. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I was born in 41, so I'm a little before that. But I'm, I'm still planning on that. Like I said a few weeks ago, I think, I'm looking for the upper taker and not the undertaker. So <laughs> all these things are really, they're, they're coming on us real quick here, coming real fast. And so as you watch the, uh, the news on TV, you can just about pick your Bible up and say, oh, there that is. <laughs> but here we go into chapter 10. And this is going to give us some insight that we need, too, as we prepare for the new world order and uh, really just for day-to-day life in this world. Uh, here we are in chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. That was his Babylonian name, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was their their Babylonian names. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning. He was in mourning. He was uh, humbling himself. In mourning for three full weeks, 
I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. On the 24th day of the first month, I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris. I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of euphaz. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes were torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Now let's just go on to uh, verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor, my strength, was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Okay, let's go back and think about some of these things. First of all, let's notice that, that there's a time gap here. There's a, this is a different time from chapter 9. In chapter 9, it was basically 538 B.C. Now we, here we are a couple of years later. As a matter of fact, someone has worked this out using the various calendars, the Jewish lunar calendar and so forth, and has worked out this to be April the 23rd, 536 B.C. Now, how is that? Wow. <laughs> That's somebody that really has studied this carefully. So it's April the 23rd, 536 B.C. when this takes place. Daniel has been in mourning that he, he has been humbling himself before God. You remember in chapter 9, the first part of 9, he was humbling himself and he was confessing his sins and the sins of his people before God as he saw from Jeremiah that the 70-year captivity was about to come to an end. And so that was the, the background for chapter 9. Here we are in chapter 10. This is a couple of years later. What's happened? Well, Cyrus has allowed the Jews to return and to begin building on the temple. And now here is Daniel... But instead of being happy, he seems to be gloomy. Uh, here's this old man, and he's old at this time. He's in his 80s, maybe even 90s at this point, and he's, he's in mourning. Why is he in mourning? Well, various suggestions have come up. Uh, some say he's mourning. He's, he's not able to return to Jerusalem. It's a 500-mile trip, and he's way too old to try a trip like that. And uh, in, in that day, that was very arduous. Uh, so that may be part of it. But another thing is that, you know, it's said over there in uh, chapter 9 that, that the restoration of Jerusalem and the temple would be in difficulty, in times of difficulty. And this seems to be what was going on. And Daniel is, is in mourning. He's humbling himself before God because things, the, some Jews have gone back, but not all Jews have gone back. Some have gotten pretty comfortable right there in Babylon. Uh, we see on down the road a piece here, and there's still Jews in Babylon. Uh, that's Queen Esther comes on a little bit later. And so a lot of Jews just stayed there, but there's a, there's a trickle back to uh, Jerusalem, back to Judea. And when they get back there, they meet with opposition. They meet with great opposition. As a matter of fact, some have suggested that at this very time, there's a delegation of those nations, that, those peoples that surrounded that area that are coming before Cyrus asking him to not allow any more of the Jews to come back and to rescind his decree. Now, this is not the decree that dates from five, or excuse me, that dates from four 45 B.C., that was under Artaxerxes. This is Cyrus. Cyrus is an interesting person. Chronologically, the first time you see that name Cyrus referred to, this man referred to is in Isaiah, over there in chapter 43, 44, and that was about 150 to 200 years before he was born. 
Now, there's another little interesting, uh, interesting story there about biblical prophecy coming, coming uh, into uh, fulfillment in detail. Uh, over there, he's called my shepherd. He said, talks about how he's led by the right hand, leads him by his right hand. But Cyrus allows the Jews to go back. Daniel's not able to do that. And there's opposition. There's trouble in Jerusalem and Judea. And also, a lot of the Jewish people are not going back. So he's in mourning, and he's. Uh, this is a really peculiar time for a Jew to be in mourning because right around that time is the time of the Passover. That's a time uh, in their uh, celebration of feasts and and festivals. This is a, a time of great energy, a great time of uh, of celebration because this is when they celebrate the Passover, when the the nation of Israel was able to be uh, liberated, was liberated by God uh, with great power from from uh, Egypt. And so this is a time of great celebration usually, but Daniel's in mourning over these issues that are so troubling to him. So this old man has got a lot on his mind, and he's, he's humbling, humbling himself, and he's praying, he's seeking the Lord. And in the midst of this, as he's down by the Tigris River, you know, the Euphrates and the Tigris Rivers run, you know, sort of parallel down through that part of the country there in Babylon. He looks up and he sees this marvelous vision. Now, you don't have to be much of a Bible student to recognize that the person that he sees here is striking. He's remarkably uh, like that vision that John the Apostle had when he was on the Isle of Patmos. And what we find in the book of Revelation, when he saw that vision, he heard a voice behind him as he was worshiping on the Lord's Day. He turns around and he sees an individual like this in the midst of seven golden lampstands representing the seven churches, seven ages, and, and the seven types of churches that there are always and and right on down to the end of time and so these are so these are so striking these uh, descriptions we have to think now this must be the same individual that John sees all those many many years later hundreds of years later now as we might uh, the New Orleans Saints fans here might say well who that <laughs> well who is this who is this this remarkable individual that he sees there. Well, I believe right along with a lot of, uh, and I think I could say most, conservative scholars, that this is a theophany, or more, maybe even more accurately, a Christophany. In other words, this is a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ himself. Now just think about that. This uh, girdle of of uh, this belt of gold, this linen garment that he has on. His body is like beryl, which is a chrysophrase. In, a, in the modern translations, it's translucent. His face has the appearance of lightning, eyes like torches of fire, arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. I mean, th- this is... This is uh, this is astonishing. This just, just uh, this is an astonishing thing for Daniel to see this vision that he sees, and so much, so much, almost identical to what is seen by the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos hundreds of years later. And so he sees this thing. Now, apparently, Daniel is down by the Tigris River in this state of mourning, this state of humility before God. He's not eating any, uh, any, uh, anything other than he just has to to sustain his life. He's not drinking anything but just probably water. He's just really fasting and seeking the Lord. He's not k- keeping up his person. And he's got a team of men there with him. His prayer team's with him. And they're praying there by the Tigris River. Now, this, this is kind of good. He says in verse 7, I alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell on them, so they fled to hide themselves. <laughs> so it's kind of like one of those situations, I guess, where, where you just kind of feel the hair on the back of your neck standing up. You can't see anything, but you know something's going on. These men... Uh, they they fall into terror, and they just saturate that place with their absence. I mean, they kind of like they look down and say, "Feet, 
do your stuff. <laughs> they, they were off that same quick. They left Daniel there by himself. And so he says here that he was there alone. His strength has completely left him. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face uh, with my face to the ground. So here he is in this position. He's fallen on his face on the ground. His strength has left him. He's fallen into a deep trance-like sleep. Someone pointed out here, well, that's just like church. The pastor begins talking and they fall into a deep sleep. <laughs> well, uh, he, he's in this position and suddenly, verse 10, suddenly a hand, a hand, doesn't say the hand of this vision that he has seen. It says, a hand touched me and made me to tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. So he comes up on all fours. And then he said to me, verse 11, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking these words to me, I stood trembling. So he's on his feet now. Look at verse 12. And he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel. I tell you what, every time I see that, do not fear, I want to underline it in my Bible. Someone has said that's the most repeated command in the Word of God. Do not fear. Fear not. Someone has said there's 366 fear nots in the Bible. That's one for every day of the week, including leap year. I like that. <laughs> he says, since the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Now get verse 13. Here's where we want to think about today. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been uh, left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Okay, now let's just think about this. What's he talking about? Here is... This individual that has come. Now, when we come to uh, this hand that touches him, I want us to make a distinction here. Because I, I believe that there's more than one individual here that's on the scene with Daniel. No humans. We're talking about the curtain being raised on the spirit realm here. And let's just call this a peek behind the curtain. <laughs> and so... Here is this representation, this, uh, this uh, appearance, this Christophany, this appearance of Christ. And then there's a hand that touches him. The, the angel that has been dealing with Daniel all the way through this part of the scripture that we've studied the last few weeks is Gabriel. I don't see any reason to think anything but that this is this same Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, who puts his hand on Daniel and stands him up. So Daniel's focus is on this vision of Christ that he has. But there's an angel there also, Dan, uh, 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 Gabriel, that has helped him, strengthen him, and is also speaking to him. And he says here that the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Now, what is that? Well, who that? <laughs> what is that? Well, this prince of Persia is a fallen angel, New Testament times, we'd call him a demon. He is uh, someone uh, from the spirit realm, a fallen angel who has the assignment to try to influence the, the kingdom of Persia in order to lead it away from God's purposes. Now look, I'm going to go over this flash forward here to the book of Ephesians. And here's a passage that if you're a regular viewer or listener to Victory for Today, you know, we did a whole series on the armor of God a few, uh, well, maybe it's over a year ago now, but you can go back and get that on the website. Listen to this. In Ephesians chapter 6, where we're talking, talk, uh, told here to put on the whole armor of God, it says in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that belt of truth, 
the breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. So that armor of God is necessary because, my dear friend, look, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and powers. When Daniel went to prayer, the demonic people, the de demonic uh, uh, forces there stood against him even receiving an answer as Gabriel sought to bring the answer to him all those 21 days. So here's the situation. And ju just as we look here at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it's almost like a chain of command and we've got here. We've got principalities, powers, rulers. We've got uh, uh, darkness in the spiritual places, spiritual heavenly places. So th there's a spiritual warfare that's going on. Uh, Satan and our, his delegates are everywhere. And so what happens here is as, as we pray, sometimes we wonder, is my prayer getting through? Well, if we're rightly related to God, we know that Daniel's prayer was getting through, our prayers get through. But there's reasons for the, our, that our prayers are not answered immediately. Sometimes our prayers are not answered because we pray amiss. We saw that over in the book of James where we, we pray with wrong motives. We pray for wrong things and God just says no. It's a denial. There are delays. This was a delay because of demonic activity. There's a delay in answering our prayers sometimes. And we don't know whether there's spiritual warfare going on or just why the delay. Maybe it's we're asking for something that's just not right for us right then. The God's timing is not right for us. Uh, there's uh, uh, disguised answers. Sometimes we don't recognize the answer to our prayers because they're different than, than we had, uh, had asked for, and God has answered us in a better way, even a better way than we had asked for. So all these things can hinder the answer to prayer getting to us. So an outright denial, a delay, a disguise, and even demonic activity can hinder that. What's our position to be? We're to keep on praying. Keep on praying in faith, my dear friends. As a matter of fact, delayed in answers to prayer that does not destroy true faith. It deepens true faith. I know there's people right now that uh, they talk to me and they, they've got some loved one that they're praying earnestly for, someone that's gone away from God, they're raised up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, but now for this season they've turned their back on the things of God and, and they're praying earnestly for that loved one. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Listen, don't give up. My mother, my grandmother did not give up on me, and I was so far out. As a matter of fact, uh, mother went to be with Jesus before, just a, just a few years before I came to Christ. So don't stop praying. Just keep on praying because it, just because the answer hasn't come doesn't mean that it's not coming. Uh, I remember a story about George Mueller that a friend of his had asked him to pray for his son's salvation. And he prayed for 50 years. You know when the boy was saved? <laughs> he was saved when he was a man, and he was saved at George Mueller's funeral. So you keep on praying. There's activity that's going on behind, behind the scenes. And so you keep on praying. And he goes on here and explains to him about what is to take place. Now, remember this in spiritual warfare. When Satan fell and took a third of the angels with him, that leaves two-thirds that are on our side. I kind of like, uh, it's kind of like what our uh, former president, Ronald Reagan, said about the Cold War. We win, they lose. This spiritual warfare is not a battle between two equals. No, God is the creator. Satan is a created being we win, they lose. <laughs> That's the way this thing wraps up. Thank God it is. And all these things that hinder us now, God is going to take care of as time goes by. As we enter into these last days, these times just before the, the rapture of the church, dear friend, don't let your faith fail. Stand stronger now than ever. Deepen your faith. Get in the Word of God. See the events that are going on around you uh, uh, through the Word of God. Let this be your filter, the way you interpret what's going on right now. There's some wonderful ministries that are dedicated to helping us see uh, the uh, the outplay of biblical, biblical prophecy in our own day. Remember, 
if what we see here from uh, or what has been interpreted by Jesus' statement that this generation shall not pass away, if you're a baby boomer or younger, it's your generation. And so all these things can come to pass very, very soon. So watch for them. But remember, we win. They lose. The next thing on God's calendar event of events is going to be the rapture of the church, then the treaty, the covenant with Israel by the Antichrist, the world leader, the, the dominant person, the dominant leader of the world, the new world order, the global uh, government, and he'll make that covenant with Israel. But in the midst of that week, of that seven-year covenant, he's going to break it, and his true nature is going to be shown. That's the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the day of the Lord. It's when all heaven is going to break loose here on planet Earth. P please give your heart to Christ. Pray and receive Jesus right now. Pray this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Take control of of the throne of my life and make me the kind of person that you want me to be. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to let me know. Also, if you need a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, wherever you are in the world, we will send you a Bible. We have English and Spanish. If you prefer an English version, you can have the New King James Version like I'm using here or the 1984 edition of the New International Version, either one of those, or a Spanish Bible. And all the things that we send you, the Bibles and the materials that we send with it, will, will be either English or Spanish. So we'll send you uh, that Bible that you asked for. We'll also send you a little study guide. It's entitled Beginning Steps, real good review for all of us, and a must for a new Christians. So if you prayed that prayer, you be sure and get yours. A DVD entitled Who is Jesus? And several other little booklets that we put in there that are very helpful. One's entitled Eternal Life and one is for children. You share this with your children. And another is entitled Have You Made the Wonderful Discovery of the Spirit-Filled Life? And I'm just really eager for you to get your Bible. Wherever you are in the world, we send these all over the world, not just continental United States. So write in the address. The website is going to be on the screen as we're going off, so get that down. If you write the phone number down, call it, and you'll be given the address again when you call in. So we want you to take advantage of this offer. We're trying to get the Word of God out every way we can, radio, television, Internet, and on the printed page. Because our time is short, dear people. Jesus is coming soon. Let's be ready. <laughs> amen and amen. Well, this is Wayne Duncan saying, The good Lord willing and the saints don't rise. I'll see you right here next time on Victory for Today.